Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the con video. We're going to have a bit of a hickety pickety news slash tech roundup video. I was originally going to be putting this video out primarily focusing upon the comments from Phil Spencer regarding the direction of the Xbox One and also the gaming division from Microsoft as a whole. Uh, specifically, Project Scorpio, because I think it's quite interesting what he said. But. Um, some updates have happened regarding the GTX 1060. Now, this is not the 6 gigabyte version of the card I'm about to uh, mention here. It's the uh, 3 gigabyte. Essentially, some of the specifications are actually different with the 3 gigabyte model of the card. So, I figured um, because I did that big um, benchmark thing earlier with the GTX 1060, link in the video description if you want it, where I compare it against the RX 480, because some official benchmarks, reviewer guide benchmarks from NVIDIA have actually been leaked. So I figured I could put this out and not have to do an entire separate video, so it just makes things a lot easier for everyone. I guess the first thing we should start out with is the GTX 1060, because it's the quickest to get through since it requires a lot less opinion on my part. So, as you're probably aware, the GTX 1060 is using the GP106 GPU. Now, that core is the 400, so GP106-400 is going to be found in the GTX 1060 6GB, whereas the 3GB, and this has been rumoured for some time now, is going to be using the GP106-300. Now, we already know the performance of the GTX 1060 6GB is going to have 1280 CUDA cores, but there were some questions regarding the 3GB iteration of the GPU. Now, Benchlife.info have got some specifications to hand. Now, obviously, these are not official specifications from NVIDIA, but essentially, the too long didn't read is that you're looking at 128 less CUDA cores and you're also looking at fewer TMUs than the than the GP106400, in other words the core which is found within the 6GB card. You're looking at 1280 versus 1152 and 80 TMUs versus 72 of the 3GB model. Now, you might notice that there are definitely some suspicious looking numbers regarding this leak. Once again, I'm about to say supposed leak. Well, up to you. For example, the GPU core clock is, a, is a, well, 139 megahertz. And the memory is, uh, well, 90 gigabytes per second. Now, I'm going to go on a limb and probably see that that's not accurate. So, I don't know whether it's someone's just forgot to put a zero or something there but um yeah i mean let's just for the sake of argument assume these specifications are roughly accurate and i think they probably are if benchlife.info are putting them out i just don't think we should put any particular um stock into the clock speeds it means that there is going to definitely be quite a large performance difference between the 1060 6 gigabyte and the 1060 3 gigabyte Obviously, it really comes down to pricing. This version of the card is going to be more focused, I'm going to assume, on taking out the RX 470, which we discussed earlier with the official specifications. My personal standpoint, however, remains unchanged. I'm not convinced 3 gigabytes of memory with today's graphical demands as even at 1080p is enough. Now I know some people are going to say, yeah, but I'm gaming fine on X amount of memory. And it's true, if you've got a GTX 960, you're probably going to be okay. But if you start cranking up that uh, graphical fidelities, you're going to have definitely some issues. And this is particularly true, might I add, when you think about Scorpio and Neo, which means that when those systems are launched, you're probably going to see developers crank up the texture quality that much more because they've got a wider audience who can enjoy those higher quality textures. This is why I made a video a while ago saying that Scorpio and the Neo is actually going to benefit the PC quite substantially. So my my gut feeling on this, you know, it's a good GPU for those who need it. But honestly, I would either go with the RX 480 4 GB if you're strapped for cash or simply plump up the extra and go with the 6 gigabyte. but obviously at the end of the day we need to see official uh, benchmarks and all of that stuff anyway. 
Now, on to the actual purpose that I made the video. Let's talk about Microsoft, shall we? In a recent interview with The Guardian, the head of Xbox, Phil Spencer, has discussed a couple of very key important um, points regarding the future of where they're going with their brand. Now, one that I found, one quote that I found particularly interesting was their strategy compared to Sony's. Sony is doing incredibly well with the PS4, but they're doing something fundamentally different from us. We're not building a strategy in response to what they're doing. We are building a response to what I see customers and gamers asking us for, end quote. Now, it's kind of difficult to know if that's 100% truthful, and honestly, I don't think it is 100% genuine, because at the end of the day, they are still their competitors. But... I have said a few times over now that my personal opinion is Microsoft are in a very different market to Sony. And you might scoff and you might say to yourself, well that's not 100% true. Well, it kind of is because they've got Windows. Microsoft actually are in a better position in a way because they don't really care where your sale comes from, where their sale comes from. It can be from the PC, for example. Like you could buy Rise of the Tomb Raider um, through their marketplace on the PC. You could buy the new Gears of War on the PC. You could buy it on the Xbox. All they care about is that you are buying it and you are invested in their ecosystem. I suspect this is one of the reasons they've been so damn aggressive with DirectX 12. We could go into a whole thing regarding DirectX 12 and UWP and all of that stuff, but essentially they do want you to remain in part of that ecosystem. And Vulcan, in many ways, is a direct threat to how Microsoft could control the PC space. And I don't mean that in a nefarious way, I'm just simply pointing it out. Um, and honestly, I'm not necessarily saying that Sony are in a bad position, they're not, they're in a really bloody good position. But Sony and Microsoft, I do feel, are trying to achieve something a little bit different. They are ultimately still trying to get your custom. You know, would Microsoft prefer you didn't own a PS4? Probably in a perfect world, yes. Because then they would still be getting a larger cut of the pie when it came to third-party titles. But they probably are more interested in just getting you into their ecosystem, getting you invested in their services, getting you invested so that you don't, well, leave them to go something else. And if they can show that they've got an established presence with Windows 10, if they can show that they've got an established presence with the Xbox and make it so developers don't need to put in a lot of work, they can help use DirectX 12 to continue to leverage that. Now, what goes back to what I was talking about earlier about PCs benefiting from high resolution textures? Let's talk about Scorpio. Unfortunately, there's not exactly an awful lot of information regarding Scorpio, though we have done a full analysis of Scorpio, so I'll try to remember to put in a link in the video description if you want to check out our full analysis on the ridiculous amount of performance for a console um, and Microsoft are putting out. But anyway, Many of our developers are already doing it. They're already working to bring 4K gaming to the PC environment. We, says Phil Spencer, we can use the work we've done and bring that to console. <coughs> we can make sure that through Windows 10 de development environment, they can put one or two features into a game to future-proof it against Scorpio, taking advantage of dynamic scaling and things like that. A game can then be make for Xbox One today will run beautifully on the S, and run beautifully, but look better on the Scorpio. Now, if you want me to cut through a lot of that mumbo-jumbo, he's basically saying that if we build a game that looks absolutely beautiful on the PC, the Scorpio theoretically should be able to run that absolutely perfectly. Maybe some concessions here and there, especially if we're talking about the resolution, but ultimately, if they're making a game for their Xbox One, the original Xbox One, just to clarify, they're going to have to rely on upscaling. So, for example, let's say the game on the Scorpio runs at, say, 1440p, or it might run at 4K. On the original de device, on the original hardware, it may run at 720 or 800p or 900p or what have you. 
And also, of course, in his own words, it will still look better on Scorpio. This is something that Microsoft have kind of backpedaled on. Originally they said that there was going to be no real difference. If you don't own a 1080p TV, then there's no... Sorry, if you don't own a 4K television, there's no real purpose for you to go out and buy a Scorpio. But they somewhat did a backpedal on that, and now they're saying that developers can utilize that hardware however they want. So once again, if they want to throw in a ridiculous amount of dynamic lighting, or they want to put in more enemies on screen, or whatever, they could theoretically do that. Although I don't think they'll do the enemies thing, simply because they'll probably want the overall play experience between the two pieces of hardware to be the same. So I actually kind of take that back. Phil also said that they're still very much focused on console games and what console gamers want and they see VR as something different. Um, he's not saying that VR is not the future of console gaming. He's saying that if you're an Xbox One console gamer, we are so focused on making your experience the best experience you've ever had with the best lineup of games, we're not getting distracted. Which is obviously a bit of a jab at Sony. Now, it's worth noting that Phil has already gone on record and said that they're not interested in manufacturing a first-party VR device, but they do seem kind of interested in Oculus Rift or the Vive being enabled for Scorpio, which I'm actually okay with. I think that's absolutely fine, assuming HTC or whomever want to put that work in, and they may well do, because at the end of the day it increases their market, uh, or total available market, which is, well, a good thing for them. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were happy to do that, and that works out really sweet for Microsoft, uh, for Microsoft, because they basically have to do a lot less development work but they get to reap the benefits of the headsets being sold on their hardware and for their system to be utilized as a entry level or a fairly high end actually, I'll take that back, a fairly high end virtual reality system. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, it's been a bit of a an amalgamation. Actually, I'll go as far as to say an abomination of this video, but um, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Anyway, I'll uh, see you later, people, so bye for now.